All right, so we'll be doing the chapter two uh, problem set, okay? So for the first question, this is a question of uh, mechanical work. So basically, we are trying to find the power required for this car to move up a 100 meter long uphill road uh, with a slope of 30 degrees, okay? So there are three state, there's three questions that we need to do. So there's the one at constant velocity, the second one from rest to final velocity at 30 meters per second, and the last is 35 meter per second and slow down to a 5 meter per second. So we are disregarding friction, air drag, and rolling resistance, okay? So first we draw the free body diagram. We know that the weight of the car is acting downward, so we can write weight of the car. Basically, it's just the mass times gravitational acceleration, which is 9.81. And then we know that on the wheel side, there will be two normal force. So there's normal force 1 and normal force 2 at the wheel. So for the weight of the car, I can break down into two parts. So over here, we know it's a force vector, so I split it up to cosine 30 and sine 30 over here. So for constant velocity, we know that from Newton's second law, force equals the mass times acceleration. Because it is moving at constant velocity, so the acceleration is zero. So we know that F equals ma equals to zero, and we use summation force equals the mass times acceleration. I always make a mistake, uh. so it's not just F equals MA, it's supposed to be summation F equals MA. Okay, so taking this way as positive and this way as negative, then we can do this, uh, we can sub in the formula. However, take note that in this question, they are asking for power required and not the total energy that the car is having. Okay, so power required basically is related to work done. So work done, you need force time distance, that's why I'm finding out force. Okay. So basically, F equals MA, summation force, I know there's a forward force, and then there's a, a reverse force, which is basically the weight pulling it down. So F minus the weight pulling it down equals zero, then I can find out F equals to uh, 5640.75 newtons. Then we know that work done is force times distance, and I can find the energy. Basically, power is just work done over time, and I know that they need to uh, what? Get it done in 12 seconds. So I just have been 12 seconds and I can get 47 kilowatt. Okay, next is from rest to final velocity of 30 meters per second. Using kinematics equation, because I know from rest, rest is zero velocity, final velocity is 30 meters per second, put into kinematics equation, I can find the acceleration. So, Newton's second law, force equals to mass times acceleration. Summation force equals mass and acceleration, and can I, I can find out what is my force. So when I find out my force, same process, I can use uh, force time distance over time, I can find out the power, which is 90.1 kilowatt. Okay, next, it's, now it's a slowing down movement, so 35 meter per second to 5 meter per second, we use kinematics equation again to find acceleration. Now we realize that acceleration is, is is decelerating, so it is in a negative region. Okay, so with that, I can find out my force, which is negative force, and then same thing, force and distance over time, I can find negative 10.5 kilowatt. So that's the first question. Okay, second question is a very simple question. Uh. So basically, I have some water being heated in a closed pan over here while being stirred by a paddle wheel. During this process, 30 kilojoules of heat transferred over here and 5 kJ of heat is lost to the surrounding and the pedal wheel amounts uh, as in the pedal wheel work amounts to uh, 500 newton times meter so basically it's just joule uh, so it's just 500 joule newton times meter determine the final energy of the system if its energy if its initial energy is 10 kJ okay so using first law of thermodynamics we know that energy needs to be conserved so initial energy plus change in energy equals to final energy Initial energy, I know, is 10 kilojoules. Change in energy, basically, I got 30 plus 0.5 minus 5, which is over here. I can find out my final energy, and it will be 35.5 kilojoules. So that's it. Uh, basically, it's just to uh, make sure that your energy is conserved. Well, for problem 3, so consider a uh, for eh sorry, one four zero zero kg car cruising at a constant speed, so constant speed at seventy km per hour. Now the car starts to pass by another car by accelerating to hundred and ten km 
per hour in 5 seconds. Determine the additional power needed to achieve this, this acceleration. What would your answer be if total mass were only 700 kg? So there's two parts of it. First part is where the car is 1400 kg and the second part would be if it's 700 kg. So first things first, let's convert to SI unit. So 70 km per hour, I can convert it to 19.444 meter per second. How do you convert? You just use 70 km per hour divided by 3.6 and then you can get this. Same thing over here. We know that acceleration is change of velocity with respect to time. So I can find out the acceleration. And I know my initial kinetic energy is half mv square. I know the mass. I know the velocity. So I can find the initial energy. My final energy is also half mv square. Final velocity, I found it over here. And I can find my final kinetic energy. So I can find the total change of energy that is required by the car. Okay. So the power required will be change kinetic energy over time. So this minus this over time, I can, I can get 77.8 kilowatt. For 700 kg, basically it's the same process, just that we use the mass of 700 kg and we can find it out to be 38.9 kilowatt. So basically this chapter is very simple. Lah. So not, uh, not much trouble over here. Alright, so that's it.